Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo. And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. A simple mishap leads a Hawaiian musician from Laie to discover the signature sound of Hawaii. He was walking home on the train track and playing his guitar and his comb was something fell and hit the guitar and he liked the sound that it made. An interest in the chemistry of food leads a Kauai man to open a family business on wheels. A new way of using crayons creates art that oozes with color. And speaking of art, we'll revisit a story from Iolani School about a conceptual artist who plums the depths of the human soul. We'll see the therapeutic value children with special needs derive from miniature horses. And an American Sign Language teacher tries to bridge the communication gap between the deaf and hearing communities. All in this episode of the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki No. Can do. We're here in the town of Nanakuli on the west side of Oahu at Kawai Hono Okinawa Public Charter School. Our school started with humble beginnings holding our first classes in a chicken coop in Waianae Valley in 2002. We have a strong Hawaiian cultural emphasis with the Hawaiian Namel Vai Vai as our foundation. Our mission is to create socially responsible, resilient, and resourceful young men and women by providing an environment of academic excellence, social confidence, and cultural awareness. The following story by the Hikino students at Kawai Hona Okina Oao is about a native Hawaiian man, Joseph Kekuku, and how he invented the Hawaiian steel guitar that has traveled the world and influenced many musical genres. Its distinctive twang and slides are staples of Hawaiian music today. The steel guitar has influenced musicians globally, but got its start more than 100 years ago with a native Hawaiian man from the little town of Laie on Oahu. His name was Joseph Keikuku. I've heard several stories of how it got started. The one I heard was he was walking home on the train track and playing his guitar and his comb was something fell and hit the guitar and he liked the sound that it made. This twang kind of a sound. Whoa. You, uh, that gave him an incentive to improve on the sounds. So he started practicing with this thing on the strings to get the sound that he wanted to and eventually ended up with the steel bar. The bar creates that sliding effect that you hear that is kind of like the signature sound of Hawaii. <laughs> The signature sound started to spread. When he was 30, Keikuku decided to leave Hawaii. He took his invention and his passion for Hawaiian music with him. Hawaiians were explorers. You know, they were great navigators and they loved to travel. And he wanted to travel. So he left and went to the mainland. And started to share their music and share their love of Hawaii with uh, basically the Haoles. They loved it. They loved the music. They loved the romance of the, the sounds. It went international, around the world, and, and so it became very popular. They loved the steel guitar. Not only did the steel guitar have a unique and likable sound, it had a very adaptable sound, one that soon showed up in other genres. All music, I mean, yeah, blues, rock and roll, uh, country western. Country western has big time steel guitar. Hawaiian, of course, still. Uh, yeah, it's, it's all over the world now. Joseph K. Kuku's invention, the steel guitar, lives on. The unique sound that he developed lives on, and thus the legacy lives on. So, steel guitar has influenced the world just by that one man. How 
こう上手結構こう。This is Sarah Peterson from Kavaiho no Okana Uau Public Charter School for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hikino Can Do. We're here in the town of Lihui at Kauai High School, home of the Red Raiders. Kauai High School celebrated its centennial in 2014. Currently, we have a total student population of 1,133, with 289 seniors about to embark on their next phase in life's journey. We are striving in every way to push forward with new technologies, curriculum, and even more classroom space. The following story that I produced as a Hikino student here at Kauai High School is about a family driven business located in the heart of Lawai Town. Mr. Seth Peterson didn't always dream of having his own food truck. My background is biology and chemistry, that's what I went to school for. And I moved to Kauai and I started farming and I developed an interest in food from there. A desire to own his own business led him to the kitchen. I had no interest in cooking before. The first time I've ever cooked in the kitchen is on that food truck. The science behind it is what I love. Mr. Peterson used his love of science and good food to develop Kickshaw's unique flavors. My food truck is gourmet diner food, is what we call it.、Um, Everything we do is made from scratch and takes a long time to prepare. The burger that we do is 20 hours. It's a salting process, curing process. So we do a lot of things like that, which, among other food trucks, is unheard of, and、uh, not many restaurants take that much time. It's usually all about the dollar. We, we, we are all about the ingredients and having fun doing it. For the Petersons, it's also about running the business as a family. Customer service industry is interesting. The experience of it, though, I just love it. I'm able to work with my wife, our babies with us every day, too. We've just had, we have a one year old, and to be able to work and be with the kid is just awesome. Mr. Peterson says his newfound passion for cooking helped him create the recipe to success. If you're in it for the money, it's probably not going to work out for you.、Um, and you need a product that's truly unique to be successful because anybody can go get a taco at any of the food trucks around. But if you have something truly unique, you're going to be very successful at it. Kickshaw's Traveling Kitchen proves that success is a journey, not a destination. And I love it. This is Liana Theskin from Kauai High for Hikino. Stay tuned after the show to find out what the student who created this story learned from her experience. We're here at the covered court at Kapa'a Middle School on the Garden Islands Eastern Coastline. Kapa'a Middle School is one of only three public middle schools on Kauai. Students gather in the covered court every day for Morning Club before the first bell rings. During this time, Pono Prizes are awarded to students for the achievement of the general learning outcomes. We have many amazing programs available to over 600 students who attend our school. One of which is our renowned choir and ukulele band who travel to Anaheim, California for the Heritage Music Festival every year. The following story by the Hikino students from Kapa'a Middle School is about how to create decorative melted crayon art. Over 500,000 pounds of broken crayons are discarded every year in America, according to the Crayon Initiative. In this segment, we'll show you how to reuse crayons and turn them into an amazing piece of melted crayon art. First, Gather your materials. Get some old crayons and a piece of cardboard or canvas. You will also need a hairdryer and a hot glue gun, but be careful for this tool can get very hot at times. Next, use masking tape to keep parts of your artwork clear of the melted crayon wax. Peel off the paper labels so each crayon can melt easily. Then, hot glue the crayons onto the canvas. If the crayons don't stick at first, wait until the glue is dry and try again. For our piece, we chose to put our crayons in a straight line, but the formation will depend on the design you are going for. Now, use the hairdryer to start melting the crayons. Keep in mind this step may take a while, so be patient. Once you are satisfied, turn your hairdryer off and wait for the colorful melted crayon wax to dry. And voila! Look what you and a bunch of unused old crayons can create! 
This is Kasaya Roselli from Kapa'a Middle School for Hiki No. Now, for a look at a very different approach to art, we turn to the Hiki no archives for this past story from students at Iolani School. To most people, the snap of a camera is just the sound of a picture being taken. But for Iolani senior Rachel Heller, it's the sound of art. A lot of my work has to do with um, defying traditional gender roles and gender identities. I identify as feminist, so in the future, I hope to use my photography and my art to help fight for women's rights and combat traditional gender roles. Rachel is dedicated to her art and will do almost anything to take the perfect picture. Even hiking into the forest and covering her subjects with Vaseline to get a particular effect. But eventually I um, use it as a way to create different realities and sort of shape my own identity. But I'm very thankful to have people who are willing to cooperate with me so I can achieve my vision. Through her photography and Empower Club that she helped start on campus, Rachel is working towards equal rights for women and helping girls understand that you don't have to look a certain way to be considered beautiful. We want to make sure girls are comfortable in their own skin and they understand that they don't have to conform to these stereotypes that are put out there by the media and even by their own peers. One of Rachel's teachers, Ms. Teresa Falk, has seen Rachel grow as a student and as a friend. The one word I would use to describe Rachel is herself. And, and, and it's very simple. Um, she is, she's herself. To try to find other words to describe her just doesn't feel right. You know, the growth I think from her comes from her passion. A lot of the art that I create comes from a very personal place and I did a series on anxiety and depression in black and white film last year and through that kind of imagery I hope that people who are facing the same sort of emotional trauma can relate and find some sort of solace. After I go to art school, um, I would love to shoot conceptual fashion photography because there's a lot out there that you can do with fashion and to be able to collaborate with different creative minds would be amazing. And I want to be able to share my own personal vision through galleries and just put myself out there. Hopefully I'll be able to translate a lot of my work into political activism as I get older. Rachel will attend Parsons, the new school for design in New York. Though she plans for a career in conceptual fashion photography, Rachel hopes that her work will have a powerful social message. This is Riley Sakamoto from Iolani School reporting for Hiki No. Our next story takes us to the windward side of Oahu, where students at Kainalu Elementary School reveal the healing properties of some very small equine creatures. The Therapeutic Horsemanship of Hawaii is a program that allows children with special needs to interact with many horses. <laughs> the many horses, Geronimo and Makakoa, provide comfort and affection. They bring happiness and relaxation to children. Also, the children are not afraid to express their feelings towards the many horses. He's so amazing. Um, those miniature horses, which are the most kind and generous little creatures I've ever met, they're not very much like other horses. They're very, very mellow. Uh, we put them in a minivan and we take them to public schools, special ed programs, we take them to hospitals, long-term care centers, we take them anywhere where there's people who can't afford to be around horses or people who physically can't come to be around horses. And they have been in elevators, they've gone up and down stairs, they have gone am amongst wheelchairs all piled together to visit people and they are so kind and they are so neat. And we just started this program, so it's a new job for them, and they're really taking to it really well. So they've been the new superstars, and it's been really exciting for all of us to launch this new program. The mini horses are transported in a minivan to their home in Waimanalo. The Therapeutic Horsemanship Ranch is located next to the polo field 
with the beautiful Ko'olau mountain range in the background. We saw Geronimo and other horses at the ranch. Riding lessons are available to the general public. Children with special needs can take lessons as well. Um, we teach horse care. Most of our riders will spend at least a little bit of time grooming the horses, brushing them, getting them ready to go. They'll learn how to saddle. If they also volunteer here, they learn the, day, the ins and outs of the daily care of horses. I think the biggest thing that they learn here is that horses are wonderful giving creatures and that being around them can really give you confidence in yourself and confidence in others and confidence in the horses as well. I would say I would just highly recommend a therapeutic horsemanship, especially for families that may have children with disabilities and uh, sensory issues. Riders learn to ride by utilizing various muscle groups, which stimulates learning. And most of all, the riders learn to have fun. I feel good because my heart fills up with joy. This is Keona Peters from Kainalo Elementary School. For Hikino. We're here in St. Francis School in the beautiful Manoa Valley on the island of Oahu. Our school's motto is quality Catholic education in the spirit of joy. Established in 1924 as a legacy of St. Mary and Cope, the students embrace the Catholic philosophy that each individual is unique in a college-like environment. In 2006, the school transitioned from an all-girls institution to a co-educational facility. The following story by the Hikino students at St. Francis School is about an inspiring American Sign Language teacher and how she handles her disability and teaches the younger generation sign language. I felt different, frustrated, and shy when I found out I was hearing impaired at such a young age. Here is Mary Lou Beale speaking through her interpreter. I lost my hearing when I was two years old from the result of a high fever and an ear infection. My life changed after I found out I had this disability. Mary Lou Beale, a hearing impaired American Sign Language teacher at St. Francis School, inspires her students that ASL can be easily understood. I had many obstacles to overcome until my two sisters taught me sign language. My two sisters and I honor, understand, and love each other better because we have a fun time communicating. My husband is deaf, so we communicate through sign language. I am disappointed that my two oldest sons do not communicate with me through sign language. However, Reyna and Riley, my two youngest children, are able to communicate with me through sign language every day. My youngest daughter, Reyna, is very fluent at sign language. I overcame obstacles to become more passionate towards sign language and to communicate with people. I love to teach hearing people sign language because they can communicate with me. With American Sign Language not offered in many schools as a foreign language, Mary Lou Beale strives to teach younger generations to communicate and bring more awareness about the deaf community. About 13 years ago, I started to work with Beth King, a teacher at Wailuku Elementary School for the deaf program. It changed my life when I started teaching sign language three and a half years ago. It was very different and it kept me stable. I realize I enjoy working with deaf children. It makes me feel great when teaching hearing impaired children to sign and this teaching opportunity has changed my life. There are a lot of events I attend such as ASL socials at Starbucks, deaf community events, deaf happy hour, ASL hike, and the list goes on. My passion is to educate and inspire students to communicate through sign language. It can be easily understood through the wonderful use of hands. I truly care about teaching ASL from hearing impaired people to any group of age. By having students to participate in deaf social events, they become part of the deaf community ohana in the future. Mary Lou Beal continues to pursue her passion by teaching sign language to her high school students at St. Francis School. In the future, she'd like to see sign language taught in other schools just like other foreign language classes. This is Minji Kim from St. Francis School for Hiki No. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hiki No. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Stay tuned after the credits to find out what some students learned from working on this show. More proof that Hawaii's young people, Hiki no. Can do.
Stay tuned after the credits to find out what one student learned from her Hikino experience. The challenges of doing this story all by myself was it was a lot of back and forth. For instance, I had to set up the camera myself for the interview and I would have to check in to make sure the audio is okay. For the Kauai High School story, I, it was called The Food Truck Owner, and I was the editor, producer, director, and filmer. It was a solo project, and what I see as her learning the most is maybe balancing time, a little more thought in uh, the pre-production and planning, because she did everything herself. The challenges of doing this story all by myself was it was a lot of back and forth. For instance, I had to set up the camera myself for the interview and I would have to check in to make sure the audio is okay. But working by myself, I definitely had to have a complete open mind and really channel my inner creativity to really get the story out. With the Hiki No mentoring process, I was given feedback and comments regarding my story and how I could improve upon it. The feedback I got from Terry was to focus my story more about the food truck itself, and that's what helped me change my story. For a lot of students, oftentimes they don't take the feedback well, you know, because they have this attitude that, okay, I'm done with it, I've turned it in. But as for Liana, she has a really good attitude. I thought of it as an opportunity to improve. At first it was a little tedious because I would have to change my writing style and kind of get out of the comfort zone and try something new. But in the end, it was all worth it. Do you understand what she's saying? Yeah, so I used two different mics, one for the interview and one for B-roll. So there's two different sounds. Once the story clicks, there's still a lot of details and fine tuning that needs to be done. And they're all little things, but in the end, they all add up to make a great story. You know, there's a reason for learning more and improving on the quality of what they produce because it is for an actual audience. It's not just something that gets written down on paper and turned in and that's about it. You know, it's not. It, it takes the measurement of their learning to a much higher level. Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.